today we're going to do earrings and one of the pair that we're going to do, I'm going to make the earrings that go with this, the one that I made last time. And this pattern is going to come up again in another Jasper piece. And I think I'll then move on to other things for a while. I have more Jasper beads, but I wanted to show you this pair of earrings that I had made before. The Jasper will come in so many different patterns. It isn't consistent and it's actually, I have not found it very common to get this plane of a piece, but they're absolutely lovely and you can mix the earrings with different sets. They don't have to be all one thing. The other thing that I wanted to show you was this. I was in Primark Dragons years ago and I saw these for a pound a pair in gold tone and silver tone and I saw such potential in them <clears throat> that even though I was no longer selling jewellery, I knew that I wanted to do a lot of things with them. So I asked the floor manager at Primark if it would be all right for me to buy a dozen of each. And I told her, yes, I will be making them. Yes, I will be showing them, but they are not to sell. And they decided, they talked to other managers and they decided it's all right. So I'm still working on all of those that I had purchased. And one of the things that I did with them, I'm just going to show you a couple of things to give you an idea, was I put two chains with different shells and I wear them with a choker that I made. You can do that. I also wrapped one pair in leather. I just wrapped it with a strand of leather, tied it off nicely at the top. And you can wear different things with that. So I wanted you to see that what I'm talking about when I say you can buy earrings and see the potential to make other things. But this is what I mean, all sorts of things you can get ideas for. The earrings that I'm going to make today are for this set, so I'm going to utilise the square beads in this set. I got out where the other two, there it is. So I have my silver head pins. Twenty two gauge, and I'm going to put a triangular bead similar to the beads that are at the bottom of the necklace. Here. I'm basically going to imitate that square. So I've got the square bead, a rectangle, I mean, I called it a square the last time as well, rectangle, and that. This is what I'm choosing to do, a simple pattern, but you might choose to do something with the round beads or just a number of other things. This is basically to give you the idea of how you can pick up different things in the necklace and use it, incorporate, incorporate that into the pattern for your earring. The same way as we did before, I'll be taking these. I do like these, but I also have other shapes. And you can, of course, choose from a wide range of shapes. But I'm using these again. Put the wire through. 
bend the wire at the top of the bead, bend it back a bit from over and then come, I don't know if you can see that, I bent it backwards a bit opposite the direction I'm going to go and then I'm going above the and I'm going to make the loop and, and silver is so soft so pliable that I can do that it's quite malleable now when I've turned it bend it a little bit more back so you can see that you're working on making it straight by the time it's over and I'll take my fingers and bend it while holding it with the grips. I'm going to start bending it around itself. This is the thing that I worry about is that and it make ensuring that you can definitely see everything that I'm doing it's not always easy but I'm just wrapping this around with the push of my thumb it's that soft but it also does hold once you've tied it off once you've finished it it will hold this is why I love 22 gauge silver it's just amazing to work with so I keep I continue wrapping it round with my finger let's put these down for a moment Hold the loop still so it doesn't twist and just keep bringing that round. Once you've wrapped it around itself once, to hold this carefully with my fingers, once you've wrapped it around itself once, yeah, you can see that. Don't worry about it being bent, that can straighten up. Then you can take, oh, I left those on the table. I'll just use this one. Not my flush cutter this time, it's a wire cutter. Can't be helped. And then I'll just take the grips, the flat grips, and flatten that into place. Because if I pause this video, it's going to mess up and it's going to be a nightmare. And with the shorter days, I have a rather slim window of opportunity. If I try to make a video once the, the sun has gone down over the sea, it, everything turns orange and you can't see a thing that I'm doing. It's bizarre. But there you are. By th half three, it's already almost dark here. Mind you, when I lived in Alaska for a summer, I spent a summer in Alaska, so I call it living there. And adapting to 24 hour sunlight was difficult for me. I knew I was not going to deal well with 24 hour night. So they do have, in Sweden, I used to watch the sun coming up at 9 a.m. So yeah, it's, it's quite bizarre the way it changes. Now I've gotten that all Put together as you can see but you can see that I think you can see that little tip yeah there you can see it and that is where we used the file another time I showed you how to use the file we'll do that again the flush cut pliers would grips would have made this so much easier but they're on the table over there and it's not worth pausing this thing and trying to make it work. The pausing on the 
phone is brilliant. The pausing on the laptop is too jumpy. And I could see that in the video that I made on this laptop. It was so jumpy that it was bizarre. So I won't pause it. What I will do is take this file and just go, um, just go in along with the tip, just go with it to file it smooth to the edge and it will, you'll see it blend in eventually as you do that a few times. And then it is a good idea simply because there is a little gap there. See if I can make that more visible for you. There's a little gap in this hoop here. And that's not what is wanted because sometimes this is flipping around and it can actually work its way through. So you want to take your, your flat grips and just squeeze it down. You could take it like that and just squeeze it down just enough to close that. So now you can see that there's no... Okay. And then, that's what it looks like with the necklace. Doesn't take too long, really, when you bring the correct tools over to the table. It doesn't take very long at all. If I'd had my flush cut, cutters that I've shown in these videos, that wouldn't have taken, probably would have been two minutes shorter, but never mind. And these tools, you can still find them in many of the beading websites or beading shops. They might be expensive now. I don't remember because I have the, I've had these for years, but that is the point that I'm making is that they're well worth the investment, not only in the way that they'll make your life easier making the jewellery, but they'll last for ages. I mean, these, I've had these for like at least 20 years. And yeah, so you'll have them for ages. It's well worth it. The only thing I'm looking at replacing are the flush cutters because I can see that the edges have are chewed from cutting wires for all these years. But other than that, the investment is a good one. And these earrings are so easy to make. And this wasn't even very difficult to make. The only thing that's difficult about this is everything sticks to that magnet. So take that into account when you decide to make, if you're going to use a magnet, take it into account that everything will stick to it. So you'll want to store it probably separately from your other necklaces or you'll have quite an issue. And that's that. So I hope that you can make more earrings like that and that you enjoy this video.